Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunday video. Now I know most of us are putting COVID behind us, but the virus and the disease is not going away. So in my opinion, the more treatment options we have, the better. A new clinical study was just published showing how an old drug showed very promising result in treating COVID, then it could also be an alternative to Paxlovid in the near future. So let's find out how this drug works and what this drug is and how it works completely different than all the other drugs that we have been using to treat this disease. So let's take a look. So let's first look at the problems with the currently approved or EUA drugs for COVID-19. Before the beginning of 2023, the options for treating COVID-19 can be grouped into two basic groups, antivirals and monoclonal antibodies. Now, throughout the last two years, there have been several monoclonal antibodies targeting the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein received EUA from the FDA for the treatment of COVID-19. But as the virus keep mutating the spike protein, it makes the antibodies ineffective in neutralizing the virus. So all of them have now lost their EUA. The remaining major drugs that can treat COVID work by affecting their viral cycle, the remdesivir and monopiravir, work by decreasing viral RNA replication, and Paxlovid works by interfering with crucial viral protein processing. Regardless of it being an antiviral drug or a monoclonal antibodies, both of them work against a specific component of the virus. And because they are so specific, any changes in the viral targets in new variants may make the drugs less effective or even completely ineffective. Now, in fact, viral resistance to antiviral drugs is very common, especially with RNA viruses, which frequently make mistakes during the RNA replication process and lead to changes in their protein structures. So the question is, how can we overcome this problem? One straightforward way to overcome viral resistance is to use two or three drugs that target different viral proteins, such as the strategy we use to treat HIV AIDS and viral hepatitis C. Another way is to stimulate human immune response to fight the virus. By going through this route, we would still have an effective drug no matter how the virus changes in future variants. And this strategy has been used for many years in treating viral hepatitis C. So will we have a drug that can stimulate our own immune response to fight COVID-19, to treat COVID-19 infection? Now we have some background information, and then what does this new study tell us? A new and the first large randomized placebo-control trial of using something called interferon as a potential COVID therapy was published in the New England Journal of Medicine on February 9th. If you are rushed to hear the result, here they are. Interferon worked and worked pretty well. In this phase 3 clinical study, 1,949 participants were from Brazil and Canada, and most were from Brazil. Now, they had new COVID infections and were not hospitalized, but were considered at high risk for severe disease, for example, over 50 years old with diabetes or high blood pressure. They were randomized to receive 180 micrograms of picolated interferon lambda or placebo. Most patients had received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. The study's primary outcome was to see how well this picolated interferon lambda worked to prevent hospitalization or emergency department visits for more than six hours. The secondary outcome was to prevent death. We can see that in this figure, interferon lowered hospitalization or emergency department visit by half, and it works pretty well in both vaccinated and unvaccinated participants. Now we will hold this thought here and I will explain the possible immunological mechanism behind this. Now the death rate was also lowered in the interferon group. Now let's look at the immunological science behind interferons. So why is this drug so different and important in my opinion? 
As I mentioned earlier, this drug is pegylated interferon lambda, and I'll break it down and explain it piece by piece. First, interferons are a group of biomolecules our body makes to fight viral infections in general. Now, it is considered part of the innate immune response, so it is not designed to fight any specific type of virus, but all viruses in general. When viruses infect cells, cells can produce interferons that induce resistance to viral replications in all cells, including those that are healthy. Now, since viruses need host cell mechanisms to make viral proteins, interferons interfere with the protein synthesis process, that can greatly slow down the viral cycle. Second, interferons can also activate a type of innate immune cell called the natural killer cell now, to kill virus infected cells. Both mechanisms rely on the fast and rapid innate immune response, independent of antibodies from the adaptive immune system. So this may explain why both vaccinated and unvaccinated participants benefited about the same in the clinical trials, and it also supports the idea of being more effective during the first few days of symptom onset when the innate immune response. Are actively fighting the virus, and because it boosts innate immune response and is not so specific to any part of the virus, no matter how the virus mutates in the future, it will also work in the same way as long as it is given early enough. So, what does lambda mean? Interferon lambda was first discovered in 2003. Now they are different from the more familiar alpha and beta interferon in only the cells that they are affecting. Unlike interferon alpha, which can affect a wide range of cells in the body, leading to unpleasant side effects, interferon lambda primarily only affects epithelial tissues, which is a good thing because virus. Also, prefer infect those epithelial cells when it first gets into our body. Now, because the interferon lambda is more limited to epithelial cells, the typical flu-like symptom side effect associated with interferon alpha was not seen much in the clinical trial. Now, in fact, the reported incidence of adverse events in the treatment group was lower than in the placebo group. So, what are the major downsides or risks of this drug? The first downside of interferon lambda is that it is a pegylated drug. Now, pegylation is used to increase the duration of the drug in the body so that it will need less frequent dosing. But some people are allergic to pegylation, so this drug would not be ideal for these patients. Second, this drug is an injection, so it is less convenient than oral drugs. But it can also be an advantage in terms of not missing a dose because it can be given as a single injection compared to Paxlovid that needs to be taken for five consecutive days. The biggest downside of interferon lambda is that it is not an FDA-approved drug and is not currently available in the U.S. The main reason for it not being approved or authorized is that there has not been a large, well-conducted interferon lambda trial. But now there is a large phase three randomized control placebo trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The evidence of benefit is strong, and the risk is relatively low. So when the official says follow the science. This is the time to follow the science. That is all for this week, and I know this video has a lot of immunological terms that you may not be familiar with. Now, I'm currently producing an introductory immunology series on my Pharmacy Classroom Pro channel. Now, I've already completed the innate immune response part. So, if you are interested in learning more about immunology at the college level, please feel free to check that out. And that is everything. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Meanwhile, please take care. Bye.